Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Trinomial Factoring for MPM2D. Our goal today, I know how to break trinomials of the form x squared plus bx plus c down into two binomial factors. So we're going to start with simple trinomial factoring. Uh, we're going to be working with uh, for mostly quadratic relations for the rest of the semester. Uh, and in fact, most of the quadratic relations we're working with will be quadratic trinomials. So remember, quadratic means that it has a squared there. And trinomials means that there's one, two, three terms. So we're going to be working mostly with quadratic trinomials of this form, where a, b, and c are integers. Now, if you compare the two things here, um, here's an example where this 2 is the same as this a, this negative 5 is the coefficient of x, so it's the b, and this plus 7 is our constant term, so it corresponds to the c. Now, today we're going to start off slightly easier. Today we're starting with the simple trinomials, and what makes these trinomials simple is that they are the form x squared plus bx plus c, they don't have an a out in front. Well, they actually do, but it's a 1, and we don't write it when it's a 1. Okay, um, And the a, putting an a out here complicates things. So we're going to start easy and then work our way up to more complex trinomial factoring. So what our goal is, is to take a simple trinomial like this one here, x squared plus 10x plus 24, uh, and determine the two binomials that could be multiplied in order to get it. So in this case, those two binomials are x plus 4, x plus 6. And if you expand it out, you'll see that I'm right. Um, so this is kind of the mathematical quest, uh, version of Jeopardy. This is our answer, ladies and gentlemen. What was multiplied to get it? So we're going to start where all mathematicians do, and we're going to look for a pattern. So we're going to start by expanding these and seeing if we can find any kind of patterns. And I'm going to split it into multiplying binomials that have the same signs and multiplying binomials that have the different signs. And by same and different signs, I mean that these, this pair of binomials both have plus signs, so they have the same signs. And this pair of binomials here both have minus signs, so they have the same signs as each other. So I'm going to multiply these out, and if I were you, I'd pause the video and uh, see if you can do it first. Uh, x squared plus 3x plus 4x plus 12, and I can collect up the two middle terms, and I get x squared plus 7x plus 12. Uh, for the other one, I'm going to do that with this one. It's not going to vary a whole lot. x squared minus 3x minus 4x plus 12. And x squared, if I collect those up, I get minus 7x plus 12. So you see there's only one difference here, and that is when I multiplied the two binomials that had the same signs, or both plus signs, I got a plus sign in the middle. And when I multiplied two binomials with minus signs, I got a minus sign in the middle. Um, that's the only difference between my two answers, and that was really the only difference between the two questions. So when looking for the patterns, we're going to treat the sign of the term and the number as two separate things. So the sign of the last term is, so let's take a look up here, sign of the last term is positive, the sign of the last term is positive. Now is it reasonable to say that that's always going to happen? Uh, I hope you think it is, because we got this 12 by multiplying 4 and multiplying 3. And if they have the same signs, 4 and 3 have the same signs, and when you multiply integers with the same signs, you get a positive number. Same thing over here. This 12 came from multiplying negative 4 by negative 3. Same signs, positive answer. So, the first question here is, the sign of the last term is always positive. Multiplying two integers with the same sign gives us a positive answer. Okay, how about the sign of the middle term? Well, the sign of the middle term here is negative, and I got negatives in the question. Sign of the middle term here is positive. I got positives in the question. Coincidence? I think not. So, let's... Oop. I think... Um, we can say that the sign of the middle term is the same sign as those in the brackets. The outside and the inside products have the same sign. And when you 
combine terms with like signs, you just get more of them. So we just collect them up, they stay the same sign. Now the last number is a, uh, well, we got 12 by multiplying 3 and 4. So it's a product of the constant terms in the brackets. Pretty straightforward. How about the middle number? Uh, forget about whether it's positive or negative or not. We're just looking at the number part of it. And they both say 7. And so the middle number is how do we get that 7? That 7 came from the 4 and the 3. And it was the sum of the constant terms in the brackets. Okay. And the reason for that is when we have two things with the same signs and we put them together, we get more of them, which is kind of like an addition. Now, we're going to do this whole process again, except we're going to do it with binomials that have different signs. And notice that I have the same, basically the same binomials. And by different signs, I mean different than each other. This bracket has a plus, this bracket has a minus. So they're different than each other. This one over here, this bracket has a plus, this bracket has a minus. And notice that I'm using the same numbers, but now they've got different signs in each of the brackets. So let's take a look. Uh, x squared minus 3x plus 4x minus 12. And when I combine them, negative 3x and positive 4x give me uh, 1x. So plus 1x, I'm not going to put the 1 there though, just plus x. Uh, maybe I will leave the 1 there, just for simplicity's sake. And then that minus 12. So the next one, we're going to get x squared minus 4x plus 3x minus 12. And then the negative 4x and the positive 3x, when they go together, I'm going to get a negative 1 this time. So x squared minus, I'm going to leave it in. We don't usually write it, but when we're looking for patterns, maybe it'll help us figure something out. So let's look for the same patterns as before. What can we say about the sign of the last term? Well, last time the sign of the last term was always positive. This time, it's always negative. And the reason for that is because I get this negative 12 by multiplying positive 3, or positive 4 and negative 3. When you multiply things that have different signs, you get a negative answer. How about the sign of the middle term? Well, the sign of the middle term here is positive. This is a little bit harder to see. The sign of the middle term here is negative. How do we relate that back to the two brackets? Well, if we look back at the two brackets, um, we can see that we actually, the, the 4 had the positive in it, and over here the 4 had the negative with it. So anytime there's a 4, we're going to take the sign of that. Not quite. But 4 is bigger than 3, and so it's the same sign as the larger of those in the brackets. The outside and the inside products have different signs, so when cancelling occurs, the signs with more wins. So in here, when I combine these, um, there's cancelling goes on, but I got more negatives than I have positives, so the negatives beat out the positives. Now, how about those numbers? The last number is still 12. So it's still a product of the constant terms in the brackets. And the middle t number is, well, we got 1 in both cases. How do you relate 1 to 3 and 4? Well, last time we got a 7, and that was a sum. So this time it's a difference. When we got different signs, we get a difference in the middle one. So it's a difference of the constant terms in the brackets. Now, so we spotted the patterns. How does this work for us? I have this factoring simple trinomial flowchart where we're going to work backwards and we're going to see what we do. It says, what is the sign of the constant term in the trinomial? So to follow the flowchart, if the constant term is positive, this is the information we know about the two brackets. The signs in the factors are the same. If they're negative, then the signs in the factors are different, and we're going to keep following that down. If the signs are the same, you go down and you ask yourself, what is the sign of the middle term in the trinomial? And if the sign in the middle term is negative, then both factors have negative signs. If the signs in the middle term are positive, then both of the factors have the same signs. Or, sorry, have plus signs. And then back in the middle, the second terms in the factors multiply to the constant term because the constant term is always a product. And since the signs are the same, they have a sum of B or they add to B. 
Now we can go on the other side if the signs happen to be different. Well, different signs tell us um, that the second term, well, we have to multiply to C, but since they're different, they're going to subtract to B. Since they're different, the middle term gives us a difference. Now I'm going to go through a few examples here. And again, over here, the bigger factor goes with the sign that's the same as the middle number in the trinomial. Now we got all of that out of um, fact, out of uh, uh, the pattern that we spotted there. So now we're going to, and I'm going to split screen this so that we can see um, the flowchart as we do these questions. So we use the flat factoring flowchart to help us here. And hopefully you can do this without the factoring flowchart because it's right there to help us walk through it for the first couple. Um, and so the first question you ask yourself is what is the sign of the constant term? So here's our constant term in this one and the sign of it is negative. So since the sign is negative, we know that our two factors have different signs. It says they're negative, so the signs in the factors are different. So over here, I know I have to have n's at the front because n times n gives us n squared. So now we have to ask ourselves, um, going down the factoring flowchart, we know that the second terms in the factors multiply to c, and since the signs are different, they have a difference of b. So we have to multiply to 56 with a difference of 1. And you can even kind of read this backwards. You can say, what multiplies to 56 and subtracts, because there's a minus sign there, to that number, which is 1. So the answer is 7 and 8. And since my middle sign is negative, I have to put the bigger number here. So I put the 8 there and the 7 there. Now you can check yourself. n times n. n times n is n squared. Uh, n times negative 8, negative 8n. Plus, oh, n. Plus 7n. I am minus 56. And the negative 8 and the positive 7 give us negative n. Like what's in the question. So I got those right. And you can always check by expanding. So let's take a look at the next one. Put down our two sets of brackets. Uh, I know to get x squared at the front that I have to have x times x. Now, this up here in our flowchart says, what is the sign of the constant term? Well, the sign of the constant term is positive. That means we've got to go down this branch of the flowchart. If the sign of the constant term is positive, that means that the factors the signs and the factors are the same. So I know I either need pluses here or minuses here. Now, how do I figure it out? What is the sign of the middle term in the trinomial? Well, the middle term over here has a negative sign. So since the middle term has a negative sign, I follow this branch and it says the signs of the factors are both negative. So I can put two negatives in here. And since they're negative, that means that the second terms in the factors, I'm looking at this here, the second terms in the factors multiply to C. That, that's always true. They're always going to multiply to this last number. But since the signs are different, or the, or the same, they're going to add to B. So I need two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 4. And again, you can kind of read that backwards. If you don't like the flowchart, it's kind of this way. You can say, what two numbers multiply to 24 and then add, that's a plus sign, to 4. What multiplies to 24 and adds to 4? Well, we can take a look at them. What multiplies to 24 and adds to 4? Well, what multiplies to 24? There's 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. And we have to add to 4. And I don't think there's any way that's going to happen. Sometimes that happens. 
this is not possible. There are no, there's no answer to that riddle. There are no two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to four. Let's take a look at the rest of these here and I'm gonna uh, put the flow chart away. You can keep watching that from uh, when you have your printout, um, but I'm not gonna use the flow chart anymore. I'm gonna talk you through these. I got two sets of brackets. I'm going to put a B at the front of them. Now I ask myself, what is the sign of the last term? And that answer is positive. That means that these, the signs in each of these brackets is the same. If I have a last number that's positive, I have to have two things of the same sign. And now I have to look at this one and that tells me that they're both positive. So once I've done that, then I can read the thing backwards and say they have to multiply to 7 and add to 8. Well, there's only two things that multiply to 7, and that's 1 and 7. And it just so happens that they also add to 8. So we're done. Next question. I know I have n's at the front because that's the only way I can get an n squared here. And... This sign tells me that the two signs in the brackets are the same. Uh, so then I have to look at this sign, and that tells me that they're both negative. Since the signs are the same, we're looking for a sum of 11 when we multiply to 10. Or, in other words, we can read the thing backwards and say, what multiplies to 10 and adds to 11? And the answer there is 10 and 1. The only other thing that multiplies to 10 is 5 and 2. That adds to 7, so it doesn't work. Carrying on. This one might be a little tricky because 64 has a lot of factors. So we put down our two sets of brackets. We know we have b's at the front. I look at this sign first. It's positive. That tells me that both the signs in here and in here are the same. So I either need two positives or two negatives. This tells me that they're both positive. So what multiplies to 64 and adds to 16? Well, let's think of what multiplies to 64. And if you know it, don't shout it out. 1 and 64, 2 and 32. Does 3 go into 64? No. How about 4? 4 into 64 is 18. No, it's not. 16. 5 doesn't go into 64, 6 doesn't go into 64, uh, 7 doesn't go into 64. What am I doing here? Okay, back on track. Um, 7 doesn't go, but 8 does, 8 and 8. And so remember what we were looking for. We want them to multiply to 64 and add to 16. And so it's the 8 and the 8 that we're looking for. So we put an 8 here and an 8 here. Uh, now over here, two brackets. Put down our ends. Look at the last sign. It's a negative. That means that they're... That means their signs are different. So I have to have uh, one positive and one negative. Now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 12 and subtract to 4. Now, you might know them. Don't shout them out because I'm going to look through them. I got 1 and 12, uh, 2 and 6, or 3 and 4. Those are all the things that multiply to 12. And remember, they have to multiply to 12 and subtract 2, 4. Well, it looks like it's 6 and 2. Now, since the signs are different, we got to pay attention to where we put things. And remember, I have to have more positives than negatives in order for them to combine and be positive. So this has to be 6 and this has to be 2. One last one and then you can put me away. I've got an M here and an M here. And now this sign tells me that the signs in the brackets is different. Whoop! M here, M here. They're different, so I got 1 plus and 1 minus. So what multiplies to 24? 1 and 24. 2 goes into it 12 times. 3 goes into it 8 times. 
four goes into it six times, five doesn't go into it, and then I have to go back up again, so it's not small. And so what multiplies to 24 and subtracts to two? Well, that looks like six and four. And since the middle term is positive, I need more positives. So I have to put that six where the positive is. So I put the six there and the four there. Uh, I hope that gets you started. We're done.